Hey guys, hope you enjoyed today's marathon of season one of Tasty's Making a Big. Make sure to stick around for the whole video because at one point, I'm gonna be presenting three options of giant foods to choose from for season two, and I want you guys to pick that for me. So until then, enjoy the marathon and stick around. 14 pounds of beef, 10 pounds of dough, six pounds of cheese. This burger is gonna be 56 times the size of a regular burger. Hey guys, my name is Alvin. I'm a Tasty producer and I love making crazy food. And my friend Victor actually hit me up yesterday and he is the guy that just loves burgers to the end of the world. And he goes, I got a favor to ask. You know, I like burgers, right? Well, you see, my birthday's coming up real soon and I don't really like cake. And I was wondering, could you make me a giant cheeseburger for my birthday? And I was like, dang. Okay, I see you. All right, hit me up tomorrow and let's see what I can do. Thanks, man. You're the goat. What's up, dude? How's, How's it going? Alvin? You good? What you got for me? Grabbed a couple of my favorite burgers. I oh. wanted you to come check it out. What do you love so much about this burger? It yeah. starts off with this amazing toasted brioche bun. Yeah. Toasting it on both sides to make sure it's crispy. And the beef, the way that they sear it, the juiciness. Mmm, man. And that cheese, woo! That cheese, though, it yeah. melts into all the little crevices of the beef. That's what I'm talking about. And the toppings are super simple. Lettuce, tomato. Oh man, once you put all those wonderful things together, you take that bite. Mmm, amazing. So I'm gonna try to make you a really big version of this. It might not be easy, but I'm gonna see what I can do. If anybody can do it, it's you, man. All right, thanks dude, appreciate it. <laughs> I'll see you in a bit. Time to make this crazy thing. We're gonna start with this giant custom brioche bun. Pretty classic brioche recipe. Some flour, some salt, sugar, a couple of eggs. Gonna get this started. I forgot the dough hook. While this is going, I'm gonna make the yeast starter mixture. A cup of water, yeast, some milk for the yeast to drink. Kinda get hydrated, start drinking, start growing, cause you know this yeast ain't hit puberty yet. Woo! Five to eight minutes low speed until the dough comes together and then we're gonna add a lot of butter. The dough's coming together, it's in a ball shape. For brioche, one of the most signature things is a lot of butter, so add it slowly, incorporate it into the dough and kinda make it super velvety. Yo, that's looking hot. Hot as in good. There we go. A lot of dough, y'all. That's nice. Cool. So, you gotta shape it to a ball. Get this guy into this buttered dish bed. Get some plastic wrap. Cover this guy up. Let him take a nap for two hours and I'll see you in a bit, dude. So while the dough rests, I wanna use some foil to kind of make the bun stay in this shape. Where's the halfway point for this? Hold in half again. Just gotta make a circle. Clasp it together. This sort of thing. This is a big ass circle. Hope it's sturdy enough to hold the bread, but we'll see. Oh man, this is a big boy right here. Ooh. Here we go. So satisfying. Oh sh Woo. Maybe I should have oiled my surface. Get the air bubbles out, reshape it into the form of a circle for the hamburger bun. So the recipe for this dough actually makes 10 individual buns and I doubled the recipe. So this bun is actually gonna be the size of 20 buns, I think. I'm gonna put some egg wash on this. Get off to the oven, you go. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> this is a big bun. Whoa, that is a burger bun. Then directly into the pan. Looking pretty good. Well, this one kind of toast in the pan. I'm just gonna brush some butter on this, gonna throw it in the broil over there to get toasted too. Woo, that's a nice toast. Now we're gonna make this beef patty. I got the biggest tray we could find in the kitchen. I got a lot of beef, but not with a lot of people. And it is 14 pounds of beef. In an average burger, somewhere around a quarter pound, this burger is gonna be 56 times a regular burger. Oh wait, gloves. Let's get to work. I don't think I've ever seen this much meat in my life. You know, when I went to the grocery store to get this, the lady in line behind me was like, boy, are you hungry? <laughs> and I was like, you bet I am. <laughs> it's a visual representation between Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem. All right, that's all the beef. It's like working with dough, but not really, because the dough is meat. Time to season. Garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, a lot of pepper. Make it rain, boy. Like almost like a quarter cup of salt. Don't be afraid to season your meat, y'all. Oh wait, I need to take my wash off before this get any crazier. And to make it all evenly combined, it's a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I think I've seen Salt Bay do some of these videos. I'm getting tired. This thing is wild. Never was the trainer like, hey, here's uh, 14 pounds of ground meat. Do five reps. Woo! 
All right, it's been seven years. Let's say this meat is thoroughly mixed. I'm gonna figure out how to get it into a patty shape. Second pan, please. Thanks, Brenda. Appreciate it. You got it. This is one patty. This is the second one. You gotta make it into a perfect circle. Outside's thicker than inside because when a burger cooks, it actually shrinks. That's a meat pizza. Whew, that's one. All right, let's go for another one. I'm changing to a slapping technique. This is how you train as a masseuse. Whew. I don't have a pan that can sear, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them in the oven, 300 degrees to kind of cook them all through, and then I'm gonna turn on the broiler, really nice caramelization on top to get all the flavor. The patties are done, I need to deal with the cheese though. So we're gonna make the big cheese slice now. A lot of people might be saying, hey, why don't you just put a bunch of cheese slices on top of the patty itself? I mean, you could, but we're at Tasty, we're making it big, so why not just make a giant cheese slice? Oh, a piece fell. Half American cheese, half cheddar cheese. Let it cook down, let it melt a little bit. If you are lactose intolerant, look away now. We are about to go in. That's some good cheese right there. Oh my. Oh my ma, look at this. All right, we gotta work fast before it starts to get cold. This also may or may not be too much cheese, but there's no such thing as too much cheese. Where's that spatula? One last smooth. These cheese slices are gonna go in the fridge. See you in a bit. Oh, that's hot. Oh my God, that's so hot. So these cheese slices have firmed up pretty nicely. Put these on here. Trim these up a bit. Uh, save these snacks for later. Looking good. You know, sometimes I dream of crazy things. And this is how cheese slices are made. Oh, this is pretty good. I made my own custom cheese slice. These are the biggest cutting boards I've ever seen. I didn't even know we had stuff this big. So we're gonna see if this actually works. Damn. Okay, I think that's pretty cool. I may have overestimated how much cheese I needed, but there's nothing wrong with more cheese. We're gonna put these back in the oven until they're nice and really delicious, and we're gonna build this burger. Oh, this just got so much heavier. I will see you when you are nice and melted. Bye-bye. Whew, that's my breath. That is what I like to see. I think it looks great. I just kinda wanna eat it right now, but I can't because Victor's gotta eat it. Buns are toasted, garnishes are ready, burger's ready, patty's ready. I think it's time to build this burger. I'm actually pretty nervous for it. There's like 14 pounds of beef, 10 pounds of dough, six pounds of cheese. Here we go. All right, big patty goes. Yes! Patty number two is landed. I think the bun might be a little too small, but that's okay. There it is. Do, do, do. Oh, this is looking cool. Nice floral arrangement. Seeing this come together, I think you could probably fit a piece of this in your mouth. Nice bed of lettuce, tomatoes. How's that song go? I got beans, greens, tomatoes, potatoes, yams, something. One, and a two, and a three. Time to do the top bun and the sauce. This is some secret burger sauce I made. Mayo, some mustard, some ketchup, some pickle juice. That's pretty much it. Take this toasted burger bun, then just kind of spread it nice and evenly over it. All right, here we go. Got to put the cat on the hat. This might not be a big enough hat. Come on. <laughs> okay, the top of the bun shrunk a little bit more than I thought it was going to, uh, but that's okay. This burger is pretty much done, and I'm going to go get Victor. It's his birthday today, and I really want to know if it actually tastes good, so I'm going to wash my hands, and we're going to go surprise him. This is like 25 pounds. What's up, Vic? What's up, Alvin, man? This is the size of a regular burger, correct? Yes, sir. Close your eyes. Awesome, I can't wait. Wow, why did that sound like that? You ready? I'm ready, man. Right, one, two, three. Open your eyes, Vic. <laughs> oh my goodness, bro. What? It's amazing, bro. It's like the same thing, it's but just big, right? huge. <laughs> How many burgers do you think would fit in this? Probably fit like 20 of those burgers in here. Easy. The first thing I thought of was just how beautiful it looks. Oh Unbelievable. Let's bite into this bad boy. I can't wait to try it, man. I really can't wait to try it. Oh, that's a thick burger. With two C's, maybe three. <laughs> oh my. That's a proper oh, serving man. size. That's what I'm talking about. How do you get it to be so juicy? He toasted the, you toasted the buns, bro? Oh, we're not wasting any of this. I think I'm gonna have to call down some friends, bro. All right, <laughs> let's bring in the backup. 
feeding a lot of my friends with this giant burger and just watching them finish it all, it really made me happy. Granted, the bun might have been a little small, the cheese a little too thick this time, but seeing people smile and being able to make them happy with food, that is the best feeling in the world for me. So if you got a favorite food, comment below, hit me up, send me a DM, and I will do my very best to try and make it big for you. Until then, We have like 20 pounds of dough for this donut. I don't think this table is big enough. I think it's time to go big or go home. This is the biggest donut I've ever seen. Hi, my name is Alvin. I am a tasty producer and I love making big food. So yesterday I got an Instagram message from a bodybuilder with a handle no donuts here and he says, Hey dude, I have an idea. I saw the giant burger video and tomorrow is my cheat day. I was wondering if you could make me a giant donut. Oh man. That sounds crazy. How big? Big. Gotta eat big to get big. Awesome. That's what I like to hear. Hit me up tomorrow and I'll see what I can do. And I've also been getting a lot of requests to make a giant donut, so I feel like I know what I'm gonna make today. How are so, you? Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, likewise. For the people that don't know you, what do you do? I am a cop. Cop slash fitness person. I've been a cop for over 11 years now, but I've used a social media as a platform to encourage first responders to live healthier lifestyles. So. What is the story behind your social media? My handle is no donuts here. I'm kind of poking fun at the donut eating cop stereotype. You want to command presence and look professional. You know, fitness plays a huge part in that. So what is your relationship with food? It has a lot to do with whether you're storing fat, building muscle. Cheat day is mostly to keep you sane. Drop your carbs down really low and you want to have a donut to fill you out. Yeah, make you feel good. It sounds like today is your cheat day. Have you worked out today yet? Not yet. How about I go make the big donut if you want to go work out, we can have a very fun cheat meal for you. Sounds like I'll need that workout. All right, cool. Thanks, dude. I'll see you in a bit. All right. Woo! Let's make this big donut for a big man. First thing we're going to do, we're going to have to make the donut dough. This is a yeasted donut, so we're going to start by making the yeast mixture. Some milk, some warm water, some sugar, and the yeast. Oh, I just spilled a little bit. That's okay. This yeast is just gonna soak up all this nice sugar, all this nice milk, really grow into a big boy. See you in a bit. So this donut takes a lot of flour and my mixing bowl is only this big, so I'm actually gonna be making two entire batches of this dough. 10 entire cups of flour. Whew, this is white cloud. Some salt, shortening, four eggs. Hook this up to the dough mixer, delicious. Yeast mixture, oh God, I'm spilling everywhere. <laughs> Accidents happen, that's fine, stay clean. So the funny thing is, even one of these batches makes about 20 to 30 donuts, and I'm doubling it, so there's going to be enough dough for like 40 to 60 donuts. I think it's time to go big or go home. I really don't wanna go home. Whoa, look at all that dough. Let's get you out of here. Put it into this big bowl. <laughs> this is the biggest bowl we have in the Tasty Kitchen. Get out of there. Come on, dude. It's the most dough I've held in my entire life. I would not be a good rapper. Ooh, okay, gluten, coming through. That's only one, we gotta make another batch. When I told my mom I was gonna go and make that dough, I don't think she knew that this is what I meant. We have like 20 pounds of dough in here for this donut. Turn. Woo. That was fun. These gluten strands are like super tight right now. We want them to relax. I'm gonna go in and take a long nap for the big times. All right, I will see you and I will see you in a bit. Now let's make the glaze for the donut. So the glaze is pretty simple. We just have some melted butter. It's kind of a lot of butter, but more butter, more better. <laughs> Funny thing is the original glaze recipe makes enough for about 10 to 15 donuts. We're making a really big one. So I tripled the recipe. I think this batch of pink glaze is gonna be enough for 30 to 45 normal donuts. So the butter's melted, we're gonna add in some milk. Three cups of powdered sugar. That cloud reminds me of something else, snow. So uh, there's a lot of lumps. Got a nice whisk here. Whip it through the glass. Woo, it's looking pretty nice. Nice strippage going on here. So at this point, we're gonna add the color. Literally, the ingredient is the color pink. I hope this is pink, hold on. Oh, okay, that's pink, we're good. One drop of the color pink. Oh, I added two. Look at that, two drops did that. I say that's pretty pink. Ooh, deliciousness right there. 
Can't have a giant donut without giant sprinkles. For reference, these are normal rainbow sprinkles. This is the size of one sprinkle. Do you guys know how sprinkles are made? Because I sure did it before this. We're gonna take some powdered sugar, some corn syrup, some cornstarch, and some water. <laughs> I think that's literally it. Sprinkles have colors. I have like 10 bajillion things of food coloring here. So we're gonna divide this into 10 bajillion bowls and then we're gonna color it. One, two, three, four, five. Came through dripping. Drip, drip. Got red, yellow, green, blue. Yo, blue, what's going on, man? Blue, I don't want too much. I just need a little bit. All right, there's blue. And purple. All right, yellow, you better represent us well. Ooh, that's looking nice. Boom, purple's done. So I warmed them all up a little bit and I need to get uh, each color individually into the piping bag. So a little trick, take a cup, Put your piping bag with the tip in it, right that. Chance for the glaze. Let's see if this works. Ooh. That's so cool. You know that feeling when you're like cutting through paper in kindergarten and you just glide right on with the scissors? That's what this feels like. Next color, we're gonna pick up where I left off. Tray number two. Blue. I love that. Last but not least, purple. All right. I know you really can't see it, but this is the size of one sprinkle. This is quite the size difference. I'll let these dry out and I'll see you in a bit. All right, let's see how big my dough has gotten. Sweet baby Jesus, look at this one. He went like straight through puberty and hit menopause. Get the flour. Here we go, come on. Let's get out of there, ooh. Damn, look at that gluten. Hoo -hoo. Look at you. I'm gonna work it a little bit. I'm gonna knock some of the air out of it, and then we're going to get it back into a ball shape. It's got some weight to it. Look at this absolute unit right there. This gets tucked underneath. LeBron James. This guy is gonna relax for a bit, and then we are going to shape him into an actual donut. So one thing that I should have probably thought about was how big this donut is gonna be. So this is the biggest pan we actually have. I don't think this pan is gonna cut it. I have a friend who's a chef nearby. I'm hoping that he has something bigger, so let me message him and see what he says. Like, hey, super random question, but what is the size of your biggest pan? I got a stupid big wok. It's 30 inches. $5 bill for reference. Holy moly, I'm coming over. 30 inches is the entire width of this table. So his walk is gonna be like this big. So I gotta turn this ball of dough into a perfect donut ring. Rock my baby. <laughs> no, this is kind of fun. I've never really had to use my forearms to knead before. I'm gonna start in the middle and work your way outwards. Whew. Okay, how are we looking? Yeah, that's not big enough. I don't think this table is big enough. Gotta get him into circle. Gotta interlock these two ends over here. Birds and the bees, am I right? Whew. Now I gotta figure out how to transport this all the way to the restaurant. Large piece of cardboard covered in parchment paper and taped together in the back, so here we go. Let's gonna go for it. All right, we can reshape it, that's okay. All right, you little, let's get over here. We're gonna cover this in plastic wrap and then we're gonna head over to the restaurant. All right, can someone call me an Uber? What's up, Ellen? How you doing? How's it going, Eric? Oh, wow, it's a big ass donut. Yeah. All right, come on in, come on in. Oh. So we got this big ass walk for you. Holy, this is, this is 30 inches. Where'd you get this? I got it in Chinatown. Oh, class. Yeah. So we're ready to fry. Yeah. 300 okay. degrees. We got it. Go lower it over a little bit. All right, there we go. Frying beautifully. Yeah. How long do you think we should fry this before, before we flip it? Uh, I think give it another like four more minutes. How are we gonna flip this, Eric? Somebody uses two tongs. Okay. <laughs> and then somebody uses two of the ladles. Do not do this at home. This is very dangerous. He is a skilled professional. This is heavy. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah, like... That's uh, here. Can it go deeper under it? Oh God, I punctured it. I think we need a better tool. Oh, okay. Ha ha! Oh, back is ripped. Oh, oh sh well, I don't know if it's gonna stay together. Yeah, me neither. That was a good technique though. Maybe we should have submerged it. I think we can get it to work. 
So I'm gonna make another batch. We're not gonna let this go to waste. Yeah, let's right? we'll chop it up and make it into a bread plate. Okay, okay, do you wanna use it? Yeah, I'll take it. All right, cool. Yes. We'll see you in a bit, guys. Eric, I made another donut. Round two, here we go, fingers <laughs> crossed. Let's do it. It's going in. Yep, go ahead. Woo! Beautiful. So this goes in. Okay, so we're gonna submerge it to make sure that it can cook more evenly. Can cook more evenly. Yeah. Yes. Let's do this, and then we'll press it down with heavy stuff. You have a textbook. Two I have textbook plates. Two on each side. This is a very uh, DIY situation. It's called problem solving. This is what Columbia University doesn't teach. You. So I think this is gonna cook for what, like 20, 25 minutes? Yeah. We're gonna check back in a bit to see if we can flip it. This is looking pretty good. If you look at it, it looks really beautiful. Super, super crispy. We are going to try a super hard task of flipping it because last time this is where it failed. All right, let's take off these weights. One, two, three. Whoa, dude, this thing's huge. Wow, this is a nice, nice donut. All right, a little white spot in the back. Uh, we're gonna cook it once it flipped over and then I'll trim off any that doesn't look good. All right, get out of there. Woo! I just wanna see how heavy this is. Oh, this is hella heavy. Let's do the tray method. All right. Okay, so we're gonna get under here. Can you help me get this onto the tray? Yes. yes. Oh, look at it. Look at how solid that Whoa. is. Whoa! Here we go again. <laughs> Beautiful, 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 beautiful. You got it, you got it. Yeah, okay. So, whoa, look at that. Oh, let's go. Yes. This is crazy. We did it. Look at yes, that. It's awesome. Oh my Looks like a cross between a bagel and a donut. This is the biggest donut I've ever seen. This is the Homer donut. It's a big zero because that's how many calories there are. I don't think that's how it works. You get on? Oh, great. Nice job, Eric. I got the back. Go. Yes. Okay, we got it? Yep. All right, cool. Good, good, good. Careful of the hot oil coming in. Go. And tray underneath. Beautiful. Woo! Got to do some ASMR. Hold on, where's the... Hello. Today, we will be exploring a giant donut. I'm not doing that ever again. All right. Thanks, dude. See you, man. Have a good one. Bye. Best of luck. Woo! All right, we are back and we are going to make this big donut. Let's get my sprinkles. I made some white sprinkles because I forgot to do that. And after seeing how big the donut was, I doubled how much glaze I have. All I need to do is cut these giant sprinkles into their shape and we can finally glaze and sprinkle the donut. Oh. Damn. That's a nice sprinkle right here. If I accidentally hit someone with this, this might be a salt with a deadly weapon. More like salt with delicious weapon. All right, these sprinkles are ready to go. I think it's time to glaze this donut. Make sure there's no lumps. And looking good. This might get messy. Woo! Damn, look at this glaze waterfall. So we gotta put on the sprinkles before everything starts to set. So all the colors. I think this is done. Here we go. Hey Mike. Yeah. Do you want your donut? Oh, I'm ready. All right, close your eyes, we're coming. This is so heavy. <laughs> we needed two people to lift it. One, two, three. Open your eyes. No way. <laughs> Are you kidding me? This is what you uh, expected when I said I was gonna make you a giant donut. I wasn't thinking this big, man. <laughs> this is insane. Pick, how did, this gotta be 20, 30 pounds. We'll cut piece for you. Woo. Oh man, that's like three donuts right there. Woo. This is for you. All right. Cheers, Mike. Cheers. Happy this. cheat day. Yeah. Dude, it's pretty good. It's perfect. Crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Icing is great. A lot of cheat days coming up. Mm -hmm. That was real good. I might have to take this whole thing home, man. <laughs> Thanks, right. dude. Thank you, guys. All right, bye, Mike. Bye, guys. All right, have a Thanks good one. Thanks for having me. Yep, see you later. See you later. <laughs> So that will probably be the biggest donut I will ever see or make in my entire life. I love making these crazy things. So if you have a favorite food, if you have an idea that you want me to try and make huge, hit me up, leave a comment, send me an Instagram message, and I will see if I can make that big for you. And if you actually wanna to go to restaurants that serve these crazy things, my friend Jasmine has a giant food series on Bring Me that is really, really cool, so you should go check it out. Until next time, peace. Things are about to get a little messy. What did I do wrong? Work. Woo! This is no time for weakness. Whoa! This is looking fantastic. Oh my god. Open your eyes.
Oh my god, that's you know? amazing. Hi, I'm Alvin. I'm a tasty producer and I love making giant food. This season on Tasty's Making It Big, I'm going to be making giant food for friends, people that I admire, and people that I've always wanted to meet. I've always admired competitive eaters, and today I've invited Raina Huang, a competitive eater, who also does amazing food challenges on her channel. Let's go meet her and see what kind of food she wants me to make. Hi. How's it going? Good. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Yeah. How did you start to get into competitive eating? My first ever food challenge without any kind of practice was a four pound burrito. And then I managed to finish that in six minutes. Wait, 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 <laughs> four pound burrito, how large was that? It was like this, but it was fat. Yeah. Oh my God, that is crazy. Is that your most proud eating accomplishment? I actually have the world record of In-N-Out. Wait, ate really? A, yeah, I, have, I ate a 50 by 50 in one sitting. It is 50 patties and 50 slices of cheese. So it was literally like this long. I want to make a giant food challenge for you today. Obviously you've eaten a lot of crazy things, but if you were to pick one food for me to make for you, what do you think could be fun? Um, you know what? I've actually done a lot of food challenges, but I've never seen giant chicken nuggets or giant fries. I did a chicken nugget challenge. Oh, okay. I ate a hundred chicken nuggets in four minutes, but not a huge one. Okay, well, sounds like I have a pretty big task ahead of me. I want to see if I can make something that, you know, will stand up to your athletic prowess. So I might be a couple hours, but I hope you're hungry. I am. I'm All right, very cool. Hungry. I'll sounds go to great. the kitchen. So giant chicken nuggets and giant fries, they're not the newest thing. Some popular YouTube channels have done them already, but we're going to do our own version and see where it takes us. I think it'll be nice to freshly grind some chicken. So we have Boneless, skinless, chicken thighs. This is seven pounds. Sounds like a lot. That's because it is. You know, we're gonna do these in batches because I don't think I'll be able to grind all this chicken at the same time. Here goes nothing. Yeah, that's what I like to see in the morning. It may or may not look gross to you, but if you ever had a hot dog, a burger, or a sausage, it's basically the same thing. I'm also using chicken thighs. I like the thighs over breasts because the thighs are juicier, there's more fat. I think that'll add a lot more flavor to the final chicken nugget. One last grind, here we go. And it's not working. What did I do wrong? Work! Oh, the top goes, top goes that way. This is why you stay in school, kids. Mmm, delicious. So this is seven pounds of ground chicken. <laughs> I'm going to season it because you always have to season your meat. So we have some salt, coarsely ground black pepper, garlic powder, some onion powder. So nothing too crazy. So I give this a nice old mix here. So this is our chicken mixture, seasoned nicely. And now we are going to shape it into chicken nugget shapes. Things are about to get a little messy. Oh boy, this is, Appetizing. Fast food nuggets, they have four different shapes. A bell, a bone, a boot, and a ball. I'm just gonna start with the easiest first. I'm just gonna make a ball. <laughs> Any DJs out there probably could remix that. Remix that. That's what they call a slapper. I wanna say that's, that's the ball shape. We're gonna make Three more, so I'm gonna grind 21 pounds more, and we're gonna make three other shapes. Yes. All right, second shape is the bell. It's kind of like an egg. <laughs> I'm gonna say that's the bell. The bone has got like this kind of weird little thing sticking out. It's got a peninsula. That's a word I learned in geography class. This is apparently the bone. Last one, we got the boot. It just basically looks like the bone. And then the someone like Photoshop has stretched it out a little bit. <laughs> Don't think I'd wear this boot. <laughs> Cause this chicken. I would say this is pretty much done. I'm gonna put these in the oven and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so while the chicken is baking in the oven, I'm gonna start making the fries. My initial idea was to fry just one whole potato. But then I was like, that's not big enough, Alvin. Come on, what are you doing? It's not the name of the show. We're gonna go for something a lot bigger. It starts with five pounds of potatoes. So this is going to boil until they're really fork tender and cooked. It's a lot of potatoes. It might take a while. So I'll see you guys in probably 10 years whenever this water decides to boil. I'm gonna go take a nap now. <sighs> oh, that was a good nap. Let's see how these potatoes are doing. Okay, these look pretty cooked. A little more appetizing than chicken. Gotta do a little QC. 
Okay, Idaho. I found a really cool toy in the back that we're gonna use to mash these. This is really awesome. Look at this guy. I'm gonna throw some potatoes in here and see if this actually works. Ooh. Okay. It is official. I like this toy. Let's load this up with some more potatoes. Here we go. That's like cheese coming out. Holy moly. Just like in the club, make it rain. Woo! I don't think this is structurally stable enough to make the fries, so I'm gonna put in some cornstarch, season with some salt to taste. We're just gonna give it a nice mix. The consistency is like normal mashed potatoes. It's kind of like that feeling if you've ever made like instant mashed potatoes where it's a little bit more crumbly. I don't want this to be wet. If it's wet, it goes in the fryer. That's just bad oil and water. Our like arch nemesis, you know, they just fight. It's that shot, you know, when the superhero and the supervillain, they both do their ultimate move and it meets in the middle and the whole world blows up. I kind of want to avoid that happening. I got the biggest tray we could find in the Tasty Kitchen. We're gonna make and shape some fries. I'm gonna be generous and say this entire mixture makes about like four fries or so. So I think I can just shape these into a nice long French fry shape. This is an ancient technique. It's been passed down for generations. The fast food industry would kill for these secrets. That's actually looking pretty good, I would say. And I got my trusty tools to help me get these really straight. I think that's one good looking fry. Nice little smooth pat down on the top. Oh sh I shaved, I gave him a haircut. <laughs> it's the last one. This is the big daddy, the head honcho. Cool, there you have it. Five pounds of potatoes, <laughs> four fries. Not bad. I think I'm gonna go make another four because you don't just eat four fries. Come on, eat like 20,000. I'm gonna put these in the freezer and I'm gonna check on the chicken to see how they look. And I'm gonna go wash my hands because there's potatoes everywhere. <laughs> look at these bad boys right here. Oh my God. I think my favorite, honestly, is going to be this boot. Before I said this is a boot that I don't think anybody would wear, I've changed my mind. I will rock these any day of the week. I wanna make a batter. I don't wanna make a dry dredge. When you have them at the fast food restaurants, they're crispy, they're light, they're airy. I think those are the signs of a liquid batter. We also have a very large hotel pan to make this batter in because this nugget will not fit in a normal pan. All right, first thing, we got some flour, cornstarch, sugar, baking powder. And then for some seasoning and spices, we have some paprika, probably one of my favorite spices, ginger, ground dried ginger, some allspice, and some white pepper. All right. I just got some white pepper in my mouth. Oh, it went in my nose too. It's like kind of stinging. We're gonna apply a remote technique. Not the most efficient, but saves you from a lot of pain. Okay, that's settled. Four eggs. Bloop, 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 bloop. And then just some good old H2O. And keep in mind, this is for one chicken nugget. I'll be here for quite a while. This is a really thick batter. It's gonna give it a nice crust. It's just very hard to whisk. Come on, Alvin. Come make this giant food. This is no time for weakness. Okay, well, batter is smooth. Now it's time to head into the kitchen, heat up some oil, and do some really dangerous things. Maybe I should not have said that. So we are in the commercial kitchen at Tasty. We have a very large pot of oil that is very hot. Please do not try this at home. But we have some fries to fry and we have some chicken nuggets and some batter to fry. I'm gonna try it with the fries first to see how it goes. I'm gonna be very careful with how I do this. Here goes nothing. Woo! We're gonna get one of these really big spiders and just make sure that this doesn't stick. Oh. I hit a chunk off. I won't touch it. This oil is currently at 375, which is hotter than the normal 350 because it just helps get a harder crust. Whoa, <laughs> we did it, yo. <laughs> this is looking fantastic, oh my God. I'm gonna call it, I think this fry is done. So I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna do this like seven more times and then we're gonna fry some nuggets after that. I think this is actually the most nerve wracking part is this big, giant chicken nugget. I have the battery here right next to the oil so it doesn't need to go that far. I'm gonna attempt to get this in the oil as safe as I can. So 
first we're gonna put on some gloves. Then I get this guy into the batter. Boop. Nice little bath you got there, Bob. I named this guy Bob. Oh, that's a thick batter. Okay. It's gonna be a little tricky because he's so heavy. Come on, Bob. All right, we're gonna go slow. Here we go. Woo! There it is, and we got an air bubble. <laughs> Not the smoothest landing. It's kind of mad right now, Bob's pissed. I put him in 400 degree oil. He's, he's fighting, so we're gonna let him hang out. Oh, okay, it's getting crispy already. Woo! That's a really good looking chicken nugget crust. If you like, you know, made me stand 300 feet away and was like, what does this look like? I'll be like, that's a fast food chicken nugget. All right, I'm gonna go in. That's a chicken nugget right there, woo! Seven pounds of chicken, ground up, baked for 35 minutes, battered and fried at 400 degrees for like two minutes and now you get a giant chicken nugget. Can you hear that? Like, oh, that's crispy right there. Something that is this big, that is fried, you gotta let it hang out. So we're gonna go fry three more. So I'm gonna need some coffee. <laughs> Whew. It's been a day. I've been frying for about three hours now, but I think the results are all worth it. We got four chicken nuggets, one of every single shape, 11 fries. I went a little overboard. When you get your nuggets and fries in your fast food meal, they don't just come in an ordinary box. No, they come in iconic packaging. So I asked our art department to make some really cool packaging for our nuggets and fries, and we're gonna put them in there. It's just a four piece chicken nugget set. But the only thing is there's seven pounds of chicken in a nugget. So we got 28 pounds of chicken nuggets on deck. I think this looks pretty cool. So let's move on to the fries. This is such an awesome box. Look at that. Got some tall ones, got some short ones. So we got honey mustard and we also have the good old fashioned ketchup. Okay, so I wanna get these over to Raina because I think she's hungry and I wanna see how much she wants to eat. Raina, are you hungry? Oh yeah, very hungry. All right, well I have your food. Can you close your eyes? Yeah. Oh boy, this is heavy. <laughs> oh God. Ooh, that smells like the chicken. Mmm. On the count of so three. excited. <laughs> one, two, three. Open your eyes. Oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> a lot bigger than that. That's you know, amazing. It's a four piece meal oh. for you. Oh, thank you. And a couple of uh, fries over there. I hope this is a big enough of a challenge for you. Okay. How do you feel? I would be happy if I could eat one chicken nugget. <laughs> I also got a normal sized portion of nuggets and fries. Cute. Just for comparison. Let's eat. All right. Oh God, it's heavy. I don't even know how to start this. I'm gonna dip it in that. <laughs> wow. Mmm. Is it good? Yeah. Wow, that's very tasty. <laughs> You're dipping your own chicken nugget <laughs> into its own sauce. How does it compare to a normal one? You actually have a lot more flavor. Sometimes the food challenges I go to, when they make a big quantity, the quality usually goes down. Mmm, this one's okay? Mm hmm All right. Man, you really can eat. That's crazy. I'm gonna try this fry. I'm excited. It's gonna okay. feel a little bit off here. Ooh. It's really good. Yeah? Wow. Yeah. Well, happy it tastes good. All right, well, that was delicious. I definitely got through a good amount of that chicken nugget, but I'll take okay. the rest home for dinner. Well, thanks for coming in. Hopefully you can feed the family with the rest of this. Oh yeah, definitely, more than enough. Thank All right, you. cool, thanks. <laughs> Woo. It's been a crazy day. A lot of meat, a lot of potatoes, a lot of frying, a lot of eating. Raina, she can eat a lot. That was crazy to witness in person. If you wanna take a guess at what I'm gonna make next week, send me a message on Instagram, drop it in the comments, let me know. I got some crazy stuff for you guys in store. So until next time, peace. I've never made pancake mix in this quantity. This is very, very heavy, I'm just saying. Like 15 pounds of batter. Open your eyes, guys. Oh, oh. I'm a little turned on right now, I think. Me too. 
What's up guys, I'm Alvin, I love making giant food, and today on Tasty's Making It Big, we're gonna do some crazy stuff. Ned and Zach from the Try Guys are coming in. I'm super excited because I've always been a huge fan of their videos. They do these crazy things and they never back down from a challenge. I don't think I will either. I'll be challenging myself to make the giant food of their dreams, so let's go see what they want me to make for them. What's up guys? Hey, how's it going? What's Good up? to see you again. How's it how going? How are you? How are you guys doing? I haven't seen you for a while. You guys been up to something? Yeah, in the last year we launched a new YouTube channel. Oh, YouTube.com slash try guys. <laughs> and now we are going on a nationwide tour. We have a new book coming out June oh. 18th. Okay. Boom. It's That's called so cool. The Hidden Power of up. What's this book about? It's a self-help book from four people that can't help themselves. <laughs> and you guys are like no strangers to like food videos. Yeah, we love making food videos. Ned has a food series. Yeah. Actually, fun fact, Ned and I are the brunch boys of the oh, Try Guys. Oh, mm -hmm. that's fun. You now get some mims, mimosa. Oh, okay, mimosas. got it. Are you like pancake guys? Or are you guys waffle guys? What is, what's your preference? Oh, I think we all yeah. know that the greatest we'll breakfast free. food. We, we know we're both obviously the same thing. One, One two, two, three, three waffles. Pancakes. What? what? It sounds like you guys have different opinions on what your favorite food might be. I'm gonna make something giant for you guys. What should I make? I mean, look, I don't think you're gonna get a waffle iron big enough. That's that is point. true. Here's the gauntlet I'm throwing down. Okay. If you make me a giant fluffy pancake okay. that is delicious, uh -huh. perhaps you can convince me. Okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna get to work. I'll see you guys in a bit. You guys feel free to hang out, but I'm gonna see if I can make your dream come true. I'm gonna see if I can create one of your first memories of pancakes to be the best thing ever. Well, let's make these pancakes. They're gonna be pretty big, so we have a lot of batter to get through. I'm gonna dump in a lot of eggs, and we're also gonna dump in a lot of milk. Ooh, I feel like the rappers in the music videos and they like pour champagne. This is actually a family recipe. It's been passed down for many generations. This one is by my aunt. Uh, we call her Aunt Jay. You know, her very, very famous secret pancake recipe. My Uncle Ben kind of fights over it. He'd rather, you know, eat rice instead of pancakes, so that's kind of how it goes. Ooh, this is looking nice. So, I don't know if you guys have seen, I made a 100 layer lasagna video, and that one kind of used foil as the walls. I kind of want to take that idea and make a pancake ring to kind of cook. In this pan over here, let's do some origami over here. You now you gotta kind of roll this around. So this ring goes into this pan. I'll let that kind of hang out. Give it a nice spray. See, the worst part about making pancakes is every time you pour the batter into the pan, it always kind of gets everywhere. And I don't think there's a solution for that. Okay, so this pancake has been cooking for about five to 10 minutes. It kind of looks done on the side, so let's give it a check. Okay, so batter on top is a little raw. That's fine if we flip it. Hopefully it's okay. Well, I don't know if you guys can see, that's burnt. I don't think this technique is working out so well. So I think the issue is I need a pan that's thicker and bigger, and we're gonna go and try to find a bigger pan. Cast on. Big enough. Should I do a square pan? No, it's not a pancake if it's square anymore. Uh, what's this? Oh, 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 wait, this is perfect. This is our paella pan. I think this is gonna work perfectly, so let's go for round two. Okay, let's put this big boy to work. I actually set up a double hot plate situation because this guy is gonna need a lot of heat. I'm naming him Jim. He will be my guide for today and we're going to see if you can make the big pancake that I want to make. This kind of feels like I'm making a pancake for an entire uh, village. Here we go. <laughs> Woo! That was an entire box of pancake mix. Um, a family recipe. I'm gonna check it when the edges are starting to firm up and a lot of bubbles are coming through. And fingers crossed because this pan was a godsend and I just really wanna make a big pancake. See you guys in a bit. So it's been like 20 minutes. As you can see, it's kind of looking a little weird. There's like a ring of like semi-cooked batter on the outside. I'm gonna say it's pretty much raw. I think the issue is that there is actually not enough heat to cook this pancake through. I don't want all this batter to go to waste, so I'm gonna send this to the kitchen and they're just gonna make some really nice pancake bread pudding. I'll be right back for a, hopefully the correct attempt at to making this giant pancake because this is heavy and Jim is not cooperating right now. I have a plan for a different kind of batter that I think we'll be able to do correctly. So we're just gonna melt a lot of butter. 
because everything tastes better with it. Essentially, what this is, it is a, it's more of a Japanese style pancake. And essentially they made a lighter batter that was more focused on egg whites to help make it fluffy. And instead of cooking it directly on the pan and flipping it, they kind of cooked it almost like in a steam or in a grill kind of oven situation so that they rose a lot and they kept their shape and the heat was even. So I'm gonna kind of go for that. So this butter is just going to melt down. That's looking pretty melted. I'm just gonna take that off. And the next thing that we're gonna do that was part of a lot of the Japanese style pancakes was the egg whites. So got a nice trusty old stand mixer here. I'll name you Dave. We got Dave and we got Jim hanging out in the back. Trusty buddies for this giant pancake. So we're just gonna get egg whites in here. So we're gonna whip these egg whites until they get soft in peaks and then we're gonna fold them into the rest of the batter. So this, we're gonna do the melted butter, and then we're gonna add some warm milk, and then we're gonna add in four beautiful egg yolks. Bloop, 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 bloop. This is just gonna get nice and foamy. Cool, and then this big bowl, we're gonna do flour, and we're gonna do some baking powder. We're gonna get this, ooh, this is heavy, in here. Ooh, look at Dave over there. He's doing work. This egg white's looking nice and fluffy. Thanks, Dave. We're going to gently fold these in to the batter. I need to do the double folding technique. I'm pretty sure this is not how you're supposed to do it. Sorry, pastry chefs. Sometimes you gotta just roll with the punches. I'm pretty optimistic about this batter, so this is nice. It is silky. It looks pretty smooth, so we're just gonna transfer this to give uh, Jim hopefully one more last attempt. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so. I do wanna smooth this out a little bit. This is very nice and very smooth. I'm going to actually take this to our grill and pray that it does work. So, fingers crossed and I'll see you guys out there. Oh, you're a heavy boy, Jim. What's your name, Dave? I forgot. So, this is our grill. I'm glad that the pan fits perfectly within the grill. We're gonna turn it on to about 300 or so degrees. So we're gonna let this guy hang out. Hopefully it's fully cooked and really nice and golden brown by the end of it. Pretty nervous, so we'll see. Please. It's been 45 minutes. I hopefully think that's enough time to cook this pancake. I really wanna see what it looks like, so here we go. Whoa, this is crazy. Holy crap, this is like a giant souffle biscuit, which is pretty cool. Okay, there's a couple of cracks. I think that's fine, we're gonna turn it out. The cracks are gonna be on the bottom anyways. All right, let's go back and flip this out. Okay, so uh, we have one successful pancake attempt. The battle is not over yet, we do have to flip this guy. I think I'm gonna put this tray on top and then kind of do something like this. This is like really, really heavy. One, two, three. Ooh. Okay. Okay, let's see what this guy looks like. Whoa! Oh my god, look at this! Woo! This is a pancake. That is right. It is a cake made in this pan. It's like so smooth. It's like a baby's butt. This is one successful pancake. For the Try Guys, I don't think they would be satisfied with just one pancake. I'm gonna need to make at least four to five more. But before I do that, I do wanna tackle the butter. So this is four entire sticks of butter that have been softened. So if you think about it, each stick of butter has eight tablespoons. So if we use all of this, we're gonna have a butter square that's 32 times the size of a normal butter square. That's a lot of butter. <laughs> I feel like I should name this guy too. Call this guy Jimbo because we got Jim, and then we have Jimbo. I'm gonna stop talking now and put this butter square in the freezer. So, I'll see you guys in a bit. Whew. Okay, this is two. Oh boy, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, this is the second one. Ooh, not bad. Okay, that's two. I will name you, this guy's Kevin. This is the third one. I'm getting better at this. Okay. Okay, you can be George. One, two, three. Oh, easy. Four. Oh, you kind of fell off the plate a little bit. That's okay. I don't know what to name you right now. It's okay, I'll name you later. Sometimes you don't name your kids till later. I hope my arms don't fail me. Ooh, ooh, that's a nice looking one. 
I'll name this guy Keith. He ain't here today, but I'll name a pancake after him. All right, here we go. This is the final pancake. All right, let's just do this. Ooh, that might be the best one yet. I want to name this guy Eugene, just like Eugene. Pretty nice flawless skin. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six giant pancakes. It has been a journey, and the only thing left is to assemble them. So we have all hands on deck, got all our pancakes. We got some berries, we got some syrup. I'm going to try and be careful with my children as much as I can. All right, Jim, first up, where are you? All you guys look alike, oh my God. Jim is very resilient. Jim can take a beating, that's why he goes on first, because he's gonna be under all the other children, he's gonna be taking all the pressure, putting the whole team on his back, literally, so thanks, Jim. All right, right on top. Got Kevin and Jim on deck. George has his two brothers supporting him, so he'll be able to rise and shine just like the rest of us. And then fourth, we got the problem child, the guy that I forgot to give a name. Whew. Okay, that's four. Keith goes on right there. Keith's on, last but not least, my boy Eugene. I think he deserves, if he's not here today, I think he deserves a little bit of the spotlight. Woo! Okay, that is, oh, that's a pretty big stack of pancakes we got here. This is by Piece de Resistance. Here we are, finishing touches. I hope Ned and Zach are happy with it. If they eat it, They'll be eating Keith and Eugene first up. This is four entire sticks of butter we got. All righty. <laughs> cool. All right, here we go. Woo! And there it is. I don't really know how heavy it is. I just want to see. <laughs> I can't even lift it. <laughs> that is definitely at least 50 pounds. And just so you guys can see, this is a normal size stack of pancakes. I would say this is a success. I didn't think I could be able to do this, but I'm glad it worked out. I think it looks awesome, and I hope the Try Guys like it. Alvin! Hey, Alvin! Hey, so, I have your pancakes ready, but first, I just wanted you guys to see the size of the syrup. Oh, oh. I so, thought that was Sangria. So, if that tells you anything about how this is gonna go, I'll be right back. Close your eyes, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm really excited. <clears throat> okay. You're so strong, Alvin. Wow, so oh, strong. thank you. Well, the pancakes are on the table. On the count of three, I want you guys to open your eyes and you see what I made for you. One, two, two three. three. Open your eyes, guys. Oh! oh, oh what? Oh, that is like so it. big. What? How do you feel, Zach? Are waffles ever gonna stand up to this? Whoa. A waffle could never stand that tall. Those are hefty. <laughs> How did you do this? So, for this pancake, I actually had to get a paella pan. So I made a bunch of batter and we made six of these big ones for you guys. Can I touch it? Yes, you can touch it. This is all yours. Oh my god, god. you ready? Yeah, gonna... Yes. Oh, Ooh. Ooh. it's got a nice, nice, nice yeah, outer crisp. crisp. This is what your baby feels like every when you every time you deliver <gasps> That's him food. True. Oh. Well, well, one second. I do have one more surprise for you guys. So Shut hold it. on here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> now so. it's a brunch. Oh yeah. yes. So I know you guys talked about Mims. Oh wow. This is... <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> if you guys want to start eating your pancakes, I will let you guys do the syrup pouring on it. No. You want to do it together? Yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh my. Oh, yeah. I'm literally sour. Oh, and here we go. Oh, oh yeah. There we go. Oh, my God. So we have giant pancakes, but we have regular size forks and knives for you guys. Ooh. The joy of pancakes is you got to get more than one layer in a bite. Okay. All right. <laughs> one, two, Cheers. three. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> you have a nice crispness to the top. Mm -hmm. There's a top layer, but then very fluffy on the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Zach, how do you feel now? Now you've had this stack. Do you change your mind about pancakes at all? You can make me pancakes whenever you want. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Woo! I'm actually personally curious to see a cross section. Oh, oh. yes! Oh. Yeah! Oh. Yeah! Oh. Look at that. That's nice. All right, so now you have to feed it to us. Ah, okay, yeah. here you go. Well, we'll Careful of the knife. There's the knife, knife is at the bottom. In the middle tastes even better. My hands are sticky, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we love to brunch, but 
I think the joy of brunch is also the joy of sharing. And I, I like would that. love if we could share this with people here. That sounds like a good idea. I'm gonna go call some friends uh -huh. that I think love pancakes and we're gonna bring them in to help you demolish this. Brunch team assemble! <laughs> It's been a crazy fun adventure, made a lot of pancakes, but I'm really happy that Ned and Zach enjoyed what I made for them. If you wanna take a guess at what I'm gonna be making next, feel free to drop it in the comments, send me a message. I'll be doing a lot of crazy things and I can't wait to show you guys what I have in store. So until then, peace. All right, hope you guys are enjoying the video so far. And right now I'm gonna give you three options of giant foods to make for season two. So number one, we have a giant sushi roll. Number two, we have giant spaghetti and meatballs. And number three, we have a giant grilled cheese. So let me know which one of the three is your favorite. Leave it in the comments below. I'm gonna take a look at it. I'm gonna choose one of them to make for the season and enjoy the rest of the video. Oh my God, this right? is so heavy. <laughs> Whoa. Oh yeah, that's actually really good. Oh, oh no. I think that this giant ramen bowl is gonna be like 20 times the size of a normal bowl of ramen. Open your eyes. <laughs> Jeez. Hi, welcome back to Tasty's Making It Big. I'm Alvin and I love making giant food. Personally, I've been a fan of sumo wrestling for a very long time. I've always wondered, you know, how do they train? What do they eat? How do they maintain that athletic prowess at such a size? So today, I've invited Yama-san from USA Sumo to come in. So let's go meet him and see what he wants to eat. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you, nice Yama-san. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thank you for coming in. I've always wanted to meet a sumo wrestler like you. Can you tell me what it's like to be a sumo wrestler? It's uh, very hard, but very nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the training like? So we wake up at um, 6 a.m. training. Uh -huh. They finish at noon. Six hours of training? Yeah. Very important. After eat, sleep. Why? Yeah. Why do you sleep? Make a big body. Uh -huh. Yeah, eat and then sleep. Are there any misconceptions you know, about sumo that you think need to be addressed? あの、お相撲さんはあの、実はあの、ジャンクフードとかは全然食べてなくて、かなりこう、ヘルシーな、ヘルシーフードばっかり食べてて、体を作ってるんで、そう、多分そこら辺が違う感覚、考えだと思います
Okay, so while the bones and the meat are blanching, we are going to char some vegetables. And the reason we do this is so that we can add some smokiness to the flavor, add some depth. You know, I like to bring that heat. All right, listen to that sizzle. This is like three pounds of onions, like 25 cloves of garlic. This Ooh. is what we're talking about. Oh my goodness. That's what I like to see. This might take a while because there's a lot of vegetables that we have to go through. Yeah, oh, it look great. Right? It's so nice and caramelized. It's about 10 minutes. I took a nap, you know, made her do all the hard work, but I got you a tray. If you don't char your vegetables, that's also okay. But all these like black bits here, it really enhances the flavor, right? It's like flavor yeah. bits. Yeah, flavor bits. We have our hard vegetables. Thank you, Inka, for uh, making it happen. <laughs> I'll make sure I put more work in so this group project doesn't become a failure. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is what the bones look like after being boiled and skimmed a bit. So we're just gonna take them out. It's time to go fishing. You see that layer of fat? Oh my, that's how much stuff came out of it. This has a lot of impurities and kind of the weird bits from the bones. Not really that great to save, so I'm gonna go dump this out so we can get a cleaner broth going. I'll leave the heavy labor to you, you Alvin. Sure? Yeah, I gotta literally carry my weight. <laughs> oh. We have to put the bones back in. Here we go. Um. Oh, that splattered. So we have the charred vegetables from earlier, shiitake mushrooms. Uh -huh. Love these. These are so good in every type of broth. Ready? What is those? These are, what is those? <laughs> what, what are those? These are leeks. Okay, one, two, three. Go. Ooh, make it rain. Well, this is like, what, three bunches yep. of scallions we got. Eat your vegetables, Eat children. Your ve <laughs> Thanks, mom. Ooh. I'll get higher than you can. I, I don't think no, that was a good idea. Not, okay, not good. Right, <laughs> Let's go lower. Right, right. This is gonna need to cook for like eight to 12 hours? Because it's like hours. a really oh. nice broth that cooks for a long time. We're basically slowly simmering it. I'm gonna take this into the back to cook. <laughs> oh my God, this right? is so heavy. We're gonna make some ramen noodles from scratch. As you guys can see, we have a couple of ingredients here. Flour, water, and kansue, also known as lye water. It's a sort of alkaline solution. Mm. I don't wanna get too scientific here, but what it does, it makes noodles chewier. Yeah. That's what gives it that sort of like springy mouth feel. I've never made these before. Uh, Me neither. All right, let's just get to it. Right. So it's kind of like pasta, yeah. but like there's no egg, right? Yeah. All right, here Slowly we go. Slowly but surely. And this is lye water. Kicking up a notch. <laughs> oh, it's making a sound. Oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Can yeah, look at that spring. It? It comes back. I feel like since you did a lot of the work with the vegetables, I gotta pull my weight. You know, you can't be the guy in the group projects that just like sits back, does nothing, and then just like shows up on the last day. I was like, oh, hey guys, how's it going? Oh, you finished? Oh, thanks. Thanks for the A. Alvin talks a lot. I'm sorry. It's the first time I've had a friend on the show. <laughs> Usually it's just lonely and me. That's true. <laughs> so. You can tell that there's a lot of, what is it? Gluten. Gluten. Yes. My boy gluten. There is a lot of gluten because it's taking a lot of like mm -hmm. arm work out to do <laughs> you this. You want me to right? get back in there? No. You good? Okay. Sorry, You're please. literally standing <laughs> up in between. It is becoming smooth. It is smoother, getting, yeah, right? it's smooth. Yeah, like it's nice. And you don't slap uh, it. I mean, how, how else do you check if it's smooth? I'm gonna say this is done. How do you feel? We just need to let it rest a little, relax a little, and then we can roll it out into some nudes. Yo, All right, let's go. Before? Yes, I have. I wasn't as dramatic as I thought it was going to be. All right, I'll take half, you take half. Ooh, that's satisfying. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like a mochi ice cream. It is. It's like a giant mochi ice cream. Would not taste like it. Oh. Two out of 10, do not recommend. We're just flattening out so then it can go through the pasta machine. All right, so this is currently set at zero. Zero is the thickest setting. We're gonna start with that and then see where we can go from here. Oh, come on, look at mine. Oh, shit. All right, you go first. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Ooh. There we go. All right, okay, not bad. So Keep that's going. the beginning. It has to be a gradual process. Slowly, you get it thinner and thinner, which is why we're going, what, from zero to? Zero to seven. To seven. Like, many times. It's yes. pretty labor intensive. This is why you need two people, man. Squish, squish, <laughs> squish. Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> this is so One silly. giant noodle. We have the fettuccine attachment. I'm gonna put the crank over here, and then if you wanna feed it through. Okay. Oh, you got it? I, I, I do got it. You got it? Oh dear. Damn. All right. Whoa! Whoa. That's All right, pretty good. It's, it's okay, that's one. All right, let's go. I'm gonna use my dough. I'm gonna be here for a couple of hours. 
broth is still cooking. Eight to 12 hours is a very long time. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna get started on the pork, the chashu. We have a pork belly here. I think it's a beautiful piece of meat. Let's get gloves on because this might get a little bit messy. Yeah. <laughs> Rolling it up because you know how when you go to ramen shops, you see that perfect circle of meat? That's what we're trying to replicate. We're gonna need to tie it though, because if we roll it up, yeah. it needs to stay together. Yeah. So how about one person ties, the other person has to hold it together. All right, hold it tight. Hold it tight, roll it up tight. I wanna go under the meat. And then, oh, wait, that's how it came out. Wow, it is slippery. Yeah. Come oh. on, Elvin. Do you wanna try? <laughs> oh my God. Is that good? Is that's it tight enough? Oh, my pinkies. I keep on. There we go. Whew. No fingers are lost today. All right, so we have it in the pot. We're gonna add the braising liquid, the soy sauce first. I know it looks like a lot of soy sauce. <laughs> Remember, this is a giant pork roll. Yeah, there's like three bunches of scallions in here. This is sake. I'm gonna save some for me. Alvin would run off with this. And then the sweet wine, mirin, and garlic. I got your ginger. Look at that, good timing. We'll add a little bit of water to top it off. We're gonna braise this for a while until it gets really nice, really tender, mm -hmm. the fat's gonna come out. And all of that sauce that just went in there, it's gonna seep right into the meat. Yeah. Goodbye, pork baby. You ready for this? I wanna see how our pork baby is doing. One, One two. two, three. Whoa! Oh, yeah! All right, let's bring this to the tray. Oh, okay. okay, all right, cool. Gently, gently. Gently, all right, the baby has landed. It's very tender. It is very tender. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. This is good. Tastes like the stuff you get on ramen. I know. Right? This beautiful broth right here. We're saving it because we are actually going to marinate our egg in this sauce. No waste. Yeah. All right. You want to take care of that? I yes. want to start wrapping this. Okay. We have something very special. This is an ostrich egg. And this is. A normal egg. For reference, you know, it's kind of like you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. This is not easy to break. And you've had like experience with ostrich eggs, right? Yes, I have. I've made an ostrich egg egg McMuffin before. Yeah, I saw the video. This feels like a grenade. Like there's no thin <laughs> shell grenade. here. Sumo wrestler said he wanted a nice soft boiled egg. Oh yeah. man. Like that's kind of what ramen comes with. True. It's like nice, right? It's yeah. like beautiful, it's mm -hmm. marinated. I think we're gonna have to resort to a technique called sous vide. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's circulating water around the egg at a fixed temperature to cook it even all the way through. This is gonna go in the water. Do you wanna give it a name? Eggie. Okay. Like a cute egg baby. Eggie's gonna hang out in the water. We're gonna cross our fingers and wait for a couple hours and see what goes on. Here we are. Three hours later. I'm just nervous. I mean, I know he's been sitting there for a long time. Soft boiled though. Yeah. I. Don't know if it's gonna work, but there's no other way to find out than to take it out and crack them right open. Even even if it's not soft boiled. Ooh, that, that was- That was loud. Gentle, gentle, eggy. Sorry. We're gonna use the back of the knife here, where it's more blunt, <laughs> and okay. just slowly hack away at it. Ready? Ready whenever you are. Oh, I felt that one. Oh, oh. no. Uh, what happened? It's very soft. It's like jello. It feels like a water balloon. I was just going to say that. <laughs> okay. Okay, it is definitely this is, not cooked. This is not what a soft boiled egg should be like. Hey. Whoa! <laughs> that's so jiggly. Oh! Oh, oh my god. This cannot I'm weak. go. I'm weak. Here, I got it, I got it, I got oh. it. Guys, this is an egg yolk. Because yeah. I think the yolk cooks way faster than the whites. Mm. And sous vide is all about cooking at an even temperature, mm -hmm. right? So there's no real way you can sous vide it where this is under and this is over. I think we might have to sacrifice a soft boiled egg and just go with like a harder boil. It's better to be safe and edible. If it's not soft boiled, I think Yamasan will understand. I would think he would appreciate the fact that he is eating an egg and not jello. Eggy has served as well. Eggy has served as well. Thank you for your sacrifice. May you rest in pieces. You need help? You good? I think I'm okay. Emotional support wouldn't be bad though. Good job, Elvin. You yes. got this, Elvin. Woo! You can do it, Elvin. So we got a second one. Um, what do you want to name it? Eggy Junior. <laughs> can I draw a face on it? Just for good luck. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Yay! Eggy, everybody. Ta-da! 
He's so cute. Do you want to do the honors? No. You gave him a face. I, I know. Feel very bad I feel I very bad. He's just He's looking ready. at me with the eyes. I know. He's just looking at me. I can't I do it. We only have one shot, right? This is one this, shot. Yeah. It's one we, shot. This is the last egg that we have. Oh. Okay. This is no. It's so sad. And so it continues to hammer his head with a knife. Oh, okay. It's not the most perfect on this side, but let's focus on this Let's side. focus on this side. This is a hard-boiled ostrich egg. Not the prettiest thing, but hey, you know, sometimes children don't turn out the way you want them to, and that's okay. We love them all the same. We should marinate this, right? Yes. Okay. We have that brazen liquid the brazen from earlier. Liquid. And down to the marinade. We're gonna add some more soy sauce to this to help cover it so we can get a full on bath. You don't want any white spots. We're probably gonna leave this sitting in there overnight, yeah. I would say. The damn thick egg. It is day two. This has Ooh. been cooking for 12 hours. Let's go, let's do this. Oh. Oh, it smells so good. That is delicious. I would eat right? that. I would eat that. We can eat everything in here. All of this stuff went into that broth, so you know the broth is gonna taste good. Look at this it's nice, like milky consistency. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh. All right. All right. Oh. Slow. 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 Wow, we did it. Cheers. It's delicious. Yeah. I think we can always add more salt and more flavor later if we want it, like such as that sauce from the braised pork Oh, we that's did, a good idea. Right? Oh, I like that. I mean, as Alvin says, go big or go home. That's what I like to hear. Let's go. <laughs> pork baby, he's back. <laughs> it seems like it's holding its shape fairly well. Gloves. <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, that was weak. Let's right, do it slice. again. One, two, three. Nice. Woo. Oh. oh. That's a spiral of joy right there. All right, that's one. Slice number two. Ooh, ooh. Isn't nice. that one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen? That's uh, six slices. Hopefully that is enough for this very uh, amazing man. It is time to assemble. We have our beautiful Eggie Jr. here. He has been sitting in this little soy sauce <laughs> mirin sake bath for a while. We have the pork belly, ginger, nori, seaweed, scallions, mm -hmm. and obviously the broth. But more importantly, a giant ramen calls for a giant bowl. <laughs> it's like the one my mom has at home. Like every Asian family has a version of this. And a pair of pretty long chopsticks to go with our pretty big bowl. Look at it. Oh, it's so dark. Wow, the marinade really like sank in. Uh, you, wanna, you wanna cut the egg? I can hold it for you. I don't wanna cut your hand. These are tasty hands, they're valuable. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. All right, cool. Bye-bye, Eggy. Ooh. This guy is tough. Wait, hold up. Ooh. Ooh. You wanna break him open? Dun, 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 dun. Whoa! Cheers. Cheers. Oh! That's actually really good. good. I think the next thing we should do is to sear the pork belly, add some color to it, okay. like how it looks in like ramen shop. We could sear it in a pan. Or pop it in the oven. Or... Time to get lit. Oh yeah. All right, Agent Lamb, proceed to target one. Copy that. Fire at will. Status report, Agent Lamb. Target you... is slowly burning. <laughs> Copy that. Target known as Pork Baby is proving to be quite resilient, but there are signs of distress. Target about to be annihilated. Oh. All right, this is, this is, this is getting yeah, a bit this much. Is kind of getting a bit much. Right, let's <laughs> Those do this. look damn good. Like the fat is crisping up really nicely. I know. Can you hear that crackle? This is so fun. And Something about sizzling. fire, smoke, meat, and fat. It's like my favorite thing in the world. Ooh. Ooh. Look at that contrast. Oh, look at that. This is the best day ever. <laughs> We are now entering the noodle zone. So we have the noodles from yesterday. We have a pot of boiling water here, uh -huh. and we have an ice bath. After I cook them, I dump it in ice water just so it lowers the temperature and so it won't continue cooking. How many servings do you think we're actually making here? I think that this big giant ramen bowl is gonna be like 20 times the size of a normal bowl of ramen. This is the final mission. <laughs> we should save the broth for last. Probably build everything else first, starting with the noodles. Like that. Oh, that's cool. All right, here, I'll help you get the nori in. This beautiful pork coming in hot. Ooh. Last piece. 
I'm mm-hmm. going in. The prettiest girl at the prom. All right. There Work we is go. Down. Next up, yep. let's do the eggs. Get it against the wall. Okay. All right, one egg in. All right, other egg is going Ooh. in. Ooh. Nice. Oh, no. it's tipping over. I'll do the Tokyo scallions. Finishing touch, some pickled ginger. There it is. This is our ramen. This is this is a ramen. This is one ramen for one man. <laughs> well, we got a lot of liquid, and I don't think we have a lot of space to do this. Yes. What's the strategy here? The strategy is there is no strategy. We no strategy are just going all. to pour it until it's full. I like this strategy. <laughs> We're just gonna put in this the braising sauce first. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna go in with some broth. Oh. oh it's man. hot. Careful. It's hot. That didn't even make a dent. Good thing we made a lot of broth. Here we go again. All right, it's going up, it's going up, oh, it's, it's going, going up. up. Nice. Going up. High five, Dean. Good job, good we job. Did we did we it, we did this it. Is, this is actually the most victorious I felt <laughs> making a giant yeah? food ever. I think this is done. You think we're ready to serve Yamasan? I think he's a very hungry guy, and I really want to see if what we made stacks up to what he expects, because we put a lot of work into this one. Yeah. You have my respect for ramen makers out there. Alvin, we did good. We did good. All right, you yeah. ready? I'm going to go get him now. All right, we're going to clean up. Close your eyes. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> almost there, almost, almost there. there. And then turn around. Okay, okay, okay. One, two, three. Open your eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Pretty cool, right? You like it? Yeah. (laughs) We have the tonkotsu broth. It's a homemade ramen noodles, big chashu, an ostrich egg. This, this, this is for you. Thank you. How do you feel? Uh, Very exciting. Are you hungry? Yeah, very hungry. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Did you like us? Oh. Oh. Oh yeah. Hmm. Oh my. Hmm. Oh my. Oh man. I love this. I would do this all over again in a heart. My heart is so mm. full. Yeah. <laughs> do you think uh, Do you think you can finish it all? I can do everything. Okay. So actually, my friend is coming here. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So my friend is Hiroki. Oh. 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 oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Today I just so very thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. We did it. We did it. Thank you for helping me today. Thank you. I for definitely have me. not done it without you. The name of the show is Tasty's Making It Big. I really don't think it could have gotten any bigger today. It thank took you. a lot of time and effort. But I think it really paid off. It was really fun. If you want to guess what we're going to be making, leave a comment, send us a message. Thank you so much. And we will see you guys next time. Until then, peace. Peace. So we have 78 eggs, six sticks of butter. I have never whipped this many egg whites in my life. This is like when you're swimming and you're doing breaststroke. My hand feels like it's literally in a cloud. Here we go. This one's for all the monies. Hi, my name is Alvin. I am a tasty producer and I love making giant food for other people. Today, I'll be bringing in my friend Jasmine, who is a host on Bring Me's Giant Food Time, where she is surprising her friends with giant foods at restaurants. I want to return the favor and also see if anything that I can make will stack up against all the amazing and huge things that she's gotten to eat. So let's go meet her. What's up, Jasmine? Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good, are you hungry? I'm hungry and excited. So for the people that don't know you, what do you exactly do? I am also very familiar with giant food. (laughs) I surprise my friends with giant foods, but I take them to locations that already serve them. And then I invite my friends in and I make their dreams come true. So basically you do the exact same thing that I do, except for you go to a restaurant for the food instead. Yeah, I don't have to do any of the work. Oh (laughs) damn, that sounds pretty darn awesome. (laughs) If you were to request me to make you any giant version of any 
any food ever, what would you like? Okay, I'm actually sweating just thinking about it. So I saw a video on Tasty about yeah. a jiggly cheesecake. Okay. Why are you laughing? I made that video. Okay, perfect. Why are you such a big Japanese jiggly cheesecake fan? It's just this golden brown beauty, you know, and yeah. then you take it out of the oven and it's like steaming and you jiggle it. It jiggles as much as my belly jiggles just like that. I will not bring you the giant cheesecake unless it jiggles. This is something that I think is gonna be pretty fun. I've made a recipe for this before, and I think we should just try to make a pretty large version of it. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're just gonna make a liquid batter, and that involves six sticks of butter, so not a diet food. Sorry, Jasmine. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cook down. Woo! And then, you know, you can't have a cheesecake without cream cheese. Oh, man. To that floating cream cheese island. <laughs> and we're gonna pour in the milk and whisk it, and I think that's gonna emulsify it and make it smoother. All right, the one-handed straining technique. All right, this just makes sure that there's not too many lumps, because I know I was dealing with a lot of cream cheese and a lot of butter. To the liquids, we're gonna add the dry ingredients. So this is just flour. Ooh, got some cornstarch. Pretty intense batter we got. No matter how many times I make giant food, I always forget how much of a physical effort it is. It's uh, getting smooth, this is quite nice. It's getting tired. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say that this batter is pretty good, pretty smooth. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna take a break. Whoo, this is heavy. There's this pan. Okay, so this is fun. Well, this is actually the same pan that I had used for the original recipe video, but I'm sorry, it will not be big enough today, so. The pan that I'm actually gonna be using, this one over here, this is a hotel pan. They use these pans to serve like food at buffets. Found what I needed. I hope this is gonna work and I hope I made enough batter. So I'm gonna go and start whipping some eggs. We have our pan and the thing is we don't want our cheesecake to stick. So before we beat any eggs, I'm gonna line this pan with parchment paper. Ooh. Ha. Shaping these up right now. Okay, so we have essentially all the pieces we need to make this cheesecake's parchment lining work. So we're gonna spray it and get everything to stick together. Okay, so we got our pan, that's lined. All right, let's crack some eggs. So we have uh, 78 eggs because the secret to this recipe is just a lot of egg whites. That's what makes it so fluffy, and we just need to separate them into whites and yolks. So I was lucky enough to be able to go to Japan to work with our Tasty Japan team. I also went with Rie. Essentially, when we were planning our trip, we were like looking for videos on what to do, and we saw this like crazy jiggly Japanese cheesecake. So we actually went to the destination in the video, and in Japan, a lot of their restaurants and shops have um, glass doors or glass windows, but I wanted to figure out how the heck they made this recipe. So what I did was, I was like, hey, Rie, can you uh, stand in front of that glass window over there? And I was like, yeah, just pose a little bit. Rie thought she was just like, you know, getting some nice pictures at the shop and pointing at things. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah just stand there. In reality, what I was actually doing, and I wasn't taking pictures at all. No, I was taking video <laughs> actually of what was going on behind Rie. And I was essentially trying to get as close as I could to see what ingredients they were putting into the batter. So she was there just, you know, really nice, didn't suspect a thing. <laughs> While I was going full Mission Impossible incognito, essentially came back home to New York and was like, I need to figure out how to make this cheesecake. So I took a guess at what ingredients they put in. So I would make a batch, I would make the batter. Every attempt was two hours, I would take it out. And then the real test was once I took it out, I would slap it a couple times and if it jiggled, it worked. If it didn't jiggle, it was back to the drawing board. So I went through like 200 eggs for like 12 attempts. And then I think I just, you know, randomly did some research one night and drastically changed the ratio of egg whites to egg yolks. And then after like 30 minutes in the oven, I was looking at it and I was like, it was like blowing up, like going through puberty. I like set the cheesecake down, it jiggled. I was like, and it went like, that's the jiggly cheesecake right there. And that is the story. I'm gonna keep cracking these eggs. I'm gonna be an expert at separating and cracking eggs after this. 
All right, so we have 12 eggs left. Um, we've done 66 so far, and because we need 12 egg yolks for the actual batter itself, I'm gonna save 12 in here and then give these back to the kitchen once I'm done. It's time to whip. Oh wait, I need a, oh God, wait, hold on. I gotta separate the egg whites first. Yeah, this bowl is not gonna be big enough. I'm gonna split it into this bowl, so I'm gonna eyeball around a half. Mmm, delicious. All right, cool. Now it's actually time to whip. So I'm gonna get these back in here. One, two. I have never whipped this many egg whites in my life. There we go. Gotta get a wider stance to stabilize myself. This is like when you're swimming and you're doing breaststroke. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm starting to breathe kind of heavy. All right, they're getting kind of fluffy. I'm gonna take a break. We're gonna stop for now. I'm gonna sprinkle in some sugar. Why am I so tired? Okay, this one's getting some sugar. All right, this guy gets some sugar too. Everybody gets some sugar. So, the sugar acts as a stabilizer as well for the egg whites. We're aiming for soft peaks here because we want this to be a fluffy cheesecake. I'm actually getting lightheaded. <laughs> I need some oxygen. Whew. I'm really lightheaded right now. Oh, we need some help. Alexis, can I get some help? I'm, li I'm about to black out. It's on. I'm very lightheaded. Could you help me do that one while I do this one? I mean, I feel like we're almost there. We're almost there. I'm, I just don't want to collapse. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. I think good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm into it. I think this is good. Let's do it. That's really silky. Thank you so much for your help. Without no that, I'd be on the floor right now. Good luck. But thank you, I appreciate it. I'll need it. I'm gonna fold these into the batter we made earlier. And to be honest, I don't think there is a utensil large enough to fold these into the egg whites, so I might have to use my arms. All right, gonna thoroughly wash my arms. Never would I think I'd be using my arms as cooking utensils, but here we are. All right, arms are washed. Time to fold the egg whites into the batter, but first we gotta take these 12 egg yolks and mix them back into the OG batter. These boys are going in. Add some fat and texture to this, so it's gonna go quick because egg whites deflate super fast. Whew. All right, this batter's ready to be folded into the egg whites. So we're gonna scoop some egg whites. Oh my God, this is so fun already. We're just going to fold. I'm trying to keep this as sanitary as possible. So it's already getting a little lighter. My hand feels like it's literally in a cloud. Now we're gonna get the rest of these. Oh man, here we go. This is wild. So I'm gonna say that this is good for the batter. That was fun. I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna pour this batter into the pan and cross our fingers to hope that it does stay exactly the same way that we want it to. And let's do it. To actually bake this thing, in the old video, I did a water bath. So we're gonna try to replicate that because I think that helps the cheesecake cook a lot more evenly. Kind of got a little like a setup here. I'm gonna do like an inch or so of water. Not too much. We don't want it to actually touch the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna put like a little filter that goes in. And then probably one of my favorite parts, putting the batter into the pan. Here we go. Ooh. Wait, that's awesome. I'm going to put this on top where the water bath is. Okay, and then smooth it out with an offset spatula to make sure everything is okay. You know, get rid of any of the really, really big air bubbles. All right, this is a jiggly cheesecake batter. There's a lot of it. I'm gonna very carefully take this into the oven. All right, let's go. It's actually really heavy. <laughs> Why is this so heavy? It's just egg whites. So from my previous <laughs> recollection of the original Japanese jiggly cheesecake, it's basically a giant souffle. So there is like no time to waste. The moment it comes out of the oven, I'm gonna run it over here. I'm gonna flip it out as fast as and as safe as possible. So it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be big. There won't be any time to spare. These are gonna get pretty intense. I might be in full uh, crazy oven mode. So if I don't say anything, that's because I'm focusing on making the food look good. I'm pretty nervous for it. So here we go. <laughs> Whoa, all right. Well, this top is really smooth. This is looking pretty cool. Like, shimmy it. All right, 
here we go. Out of the water bath. Ooh. So let's get this on to here. That's there. Oh, really. You gotta get under it. Get a good grip. Here we go, guys. This one's for all the monies. Woo! Whoa! Holy shit! Woo! Holy moly. This has gotta go back one more time so we can get it onto the other tray. Alrighty. This is wild, guys. Alright, Alvin. Right, you got this. Woo! Whoa! That's a jiggly cheesecake right there. Oh my god, I love it so much. Alright, I got I got some parchment because I'm gonna do some powdered sugar. Make it rain, as we usually do. This is so cool! <laughs> I'm so happy it worked. I think this is it, we did it. This is a giant jiggly Japanese cheesecake. Just look at that. Hey. <laughs> right, I'm gonna stop doing that before I ruin this whole thing. So, let's go surprise Jasmine. Hey Jasmine. Yeah! You hungry? Yeah! You want some jiggly cheesecake? Yeah! Well, here you go. I have a regular one. This is oh, the normal. God, I was like, no, this is the normal size one. Ooh. Just for reference, I want you to look okay. at it. Take it in. So please close your eyes. Okay. When I count to three, uh -huh. I want you to open your eyes and see the cheesecake. Okay. One, two, three. Open your Whoa! eyes. <laughs> Thank Good? you. Yes. I'm glad you like oh, it. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. I nah. think you're like, you're a, you're a god. Oh, thanks, homie. You wanna this eat this is thing? Amazing. Yes. All right, let's get in here. How about? Um... Just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> he, cut, he cut himself a bigger slice. Just saying. Wait, is it not even? <laughs> Wait, oh my god, I curve. Well, I'll give the bigger one to you. Thank you. You're so nice. All right. Well, here you go. Oh. Wow. Oh. All right. Well, here's your piece. Oh, thank you. It's very heavy. Please eat while it is still warm. Mm. This is so good. Is it good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, how do you feel on the receiving end? I'm quitting my show. Don't say that. Go. <laughs> Have you gotten down to the cross section yet? No. Well, like if you see here, right? There's almost like a custard flan kind of action mm -hmm. going on. So you get more textures. Mm. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Thanks for coming on the show. I'm glad two people that love giant food finally got to hang out and I eat know. giant food together. So this has been great. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh okay. god. Well, we did it. Made jiggly cheesecake. Got it to jiggle. Got it to wiggle. Very happy with the way it turned out. Almost blacked out at a certain point, but I'm glad I got Alexis to come in and pull through. Jasmine seemed pretty happy about it, and I was just so excited to see her face and her reaction to it because she loves giant food just as much as I do. If you have any guesses to what I'll be making next, any comments, any suggestions, you know, any ideas that you think you want me to make into a giant reality, feel free to leave a comment below, send me an Instagram message. I'll see what I can do, but you know, until next time, peace. It's an absolute unit of cheese we got going on. It's like 15 cups of Parmesan. A lot of onions to get through, a lot of tears to cry. Woo! Take a breather. I'm not really sure why I'm doing this, but it helps. Hi, my name is Alvin. I am a tasty producer and I love making giant food for other people. For the past two years, I've been playing video games with a couple of friends from work, and this one guy, Jake, he is always eating, like before we play, while we play, after we play, all the time. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to make him something giant for him to snack on because this guy eats a lot. Let's go meet Jake and see what he wants to eat today. What's up, dude? Hey, nice How's to see it you, going? man. Thanks for having me yeah, here. Yeah, of course. What have you been up to? Uh, you know, just the same old working, working yeah. hard. So I've told people that we play games online a lot. Yes. And yeah, also yeah. that you are always eating. I just always like to have food with me. 
Is that why you're like always better than me? You're always <laughs> eating. I think there's a correlation Oh yeah. There. I also do want to make you a giant food. So is there anything in particular that you think would be fun to just snack on? I mean, I love fried foods. Okay. My, my, my main finger food is uh, like mozzarella sticks. Oh, okay. How about I one up you? What if I made you both mozzarella sticks, but onion rings? I feel like Dude, they go together. Like onion rings actually were my gateway into <laughs> onions. Because I didn't what? like onions before, and then onion rings, I was like, this is not bad. I can, I can get into it. Gotta go make these giant mozzarella sticks and giant onion rings, and hopefully then I can beat you as well, because maybe you'll be too preoccupied. Yeah, that's with a two-hander. Eating. You can feel free to hang out here. I'm gonna get to it and see if I can make that happen. All right, sounds All right, good. Thanks, All right, thanks, dude. Appreciate cool. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Okay. So today we're gonna be making giant onion rings. You also might've seen them on some other YouTube channels, so it's not exactly the newest concept, but we're gonna try to make our own version. So my technique is basically, instead of making one like giant onion ring, is to shape onions into a ring instead and not have to deal with finding a ring that's like this big. So I'm just gonna kinda throw a couple of these in here. This is a lot of onions. Oh, I can smell it already. Ooh. Oh yeah, we're gonna need some tissues up in here. I'm going to actually sprinkle some salt in it because I wanna draw out as much water as I can because I don't want the onion ring to be really wet. That's delicious. As you can see, we have a bit of a onion puree going on. We're actually just gonna dump it into a bowl with cheesecloth. And we're gonna do this a couple more times. All right. That's looking pretty good. All right, round two's done. This is the onion puree mixture that we have. I don't think I can put the rest of this in there yet, so I'm actually just gonna take this out and squeeze it to get all the Oh jeez, I'm really getting it everywhere. <laughs> All right, Alvin, you can do this blindfolded. Spilling like a overfill diaper right now. Yeah, so a lot of tears right now. I think the last time I cried this much, I watched the Avengers and Game of Thrones in the same night. That was pretty intense. Oh my God, okay, actually I think this is making me cry a little more. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say that's good for round number one. Woo! Take a breather. I'm fanning my own eyes. I'm gonna power through it, you know. No one ever said this was gonna be easy. You know, sometimes what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Fingers crossed, this doesn't take me out, but we'll see. It's actually getting kind of intense. I'm gonna go grab a fan and then try to wash my hands and see if I can get rid of this. Oh, okay, that's nice. We're gonna keep going. And thank you, appreciate it, you're a real fan. Oh, that's so much better now. I should have did that from the beginning. Woo! Can't get over the amount of liquid coming out though. That's just wild. So let's see what we got. Ah, yes. A nice ball of <laughs> squeezed out onions. Woo! Okay, I had to take a little nap in the back. Eyes were killing me. Our fan is still on, but we're gonna add some binders in here to make this into a ring. So I have some cornstarch and I have some egg white. Just gonna keep mixing until all the moisture absorbs. Let's start with this smudge. It's actually really nice and soft to play with. Gotta make a hole in the middle. There we go. Get it <laughs> into a ring kind of shape. Hopefully it holds together in the freezer. Shaping it, it's coming together. I think that's a pretty good looking onion ring we got going on. Okay, I'm gonna make one more. I have high hopes for this one. Okay, strategy is to get this into a nice circle and then make the hole in the middle. You gotta be good with the fingers here because you gotta shape it into a nice hole, like a donut. I say that these are two pretty nice looking onion rings. We got some more of this onion batter. I'm gonna take these into the freezer and then we're gonna get some stuff ready and probably go work on some mozzarella sticks. So here we go. Onion rings are in the freezer. In the meantime, we're gonna make giant mozzarella sticks. We got like six pound blocks. Oh my God, <laughs> this is so hard. Gonna bisect this in entire log we got here. Okay, <laughs> look at that. All right, next cut. These down, oh, there you go. Who knew it was so hard? to cut the cheese. That's some uh, big sticks we got. I'm just gonna cut these all up first. There we go. Okay, we got four blocks. Gotta turn these into some sticks. We could, you know, just batter it and fry this one. I honestly don't think that's big enough. So I'm gonna try to get these two to go back to back. I think this might be easier if I break this in half. All right, 
come on. there you go okay then we gotta get another one to cross over these are skewered together we're gonna put them in the freezer to set up and you know i'm gonna hang out in the back I'm probably gonna eat half of this turn the rest of this into more mozzarella sticks so I'll be back. We have to make the breading. That's like a landslide over here. They call this the big summit of panko, as well as an avalanche and a rainstorm of grated Parmesan cheese. But this mozzarella stick, it's gonna taste pretty damn good, I'll tell you that. And you know, just some salts, cause we gotta still season your stuff. And then dried parsley flakes for color and for a little bit of flavor. So it's gonna get in here. Whisk all this together. Ooh, that turned into like a landscape. I'm gonna say at least probably 10 loaves of bread were used to make these breadcrumbs. Pretty much there. Now we gotta whisk our 32 eggs. Pop the yolks first. Look at this beautiful color we got going on. All right, so I'm gonna go grab those mozzarella sticks and we're gonna probably make a huge mess of trying to bread them, but we're gonna do it for Jake. Let's go make it happen. Okay, well, we have four skewered together giant mozzarella sticks. I think it's time to bread them. This is 100% going to get very messy, so <laughs> put on some gloves. Here we go. Go in here, so coat them in the egg. Alrighty, then just gonna throw these on here and do that. But this is the biggest thing I think I have ever breaded here <laughs> at Tasty. And then back in the eggs to get coated. Flip it around, back in the breadcrumbs. Oh, here we go. Okay, it's getting, it's getting a little coat. I'm into it. Okay, this guy is pretty much ready. That was one. <laughs> We're gonna do a couple more. All right, here we go, number two. Whew, this is pretty nerve wracking, guys. Yeah, these are uh, four giant mozzarella sticks. We got some extra breading. I might go make some more because, you know, I think it's always fun to have more cheese. I'm gonna take these to the freezer. I'll see you guys later, okay? Oh my God, this is so heavy. Oh God, this is like the pancakes. Cool, onion ring batter. So, got a big bowl of flour here. Then we're just gonna add in our seasoning. So, got some uh, cool seasoning salt and regular salt, some pepper, and whisking it together. Get a nice color in there. All right, that's in. And then we're gonna go with some oil, a lot of eggs. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. And then just a lot of milk. Cool. I like living life on the edge. Bring it around town. <laughs> the momentum from the hips helps the batter not drip. I'm gonna take this to the back. I'm gonna get some help because I'm pretty much exhausted and I'm gonna go to bed. Good night, guys. As you can see, this is a very large pot with a lot of hot oil. Please do not try this at home. I'm very excited to see how this all turns out and let's get to it. Okay, let's go over here. One on. This is the mozzarella stick. We're going in, folks. Slow. There it goes. We are frying at around 390, 400 degrees. This is gonna fry for about, I'm gonna say like two to three minutes. It doesn't take a long time. So we'll give it a look-see. Ooh, that's looking real good. That fried really quick. All right, well, we might be able to take this guy out. Right, let's get in here with one of these. We got this guy. All right, this is our mozzarella stick. It's pretty dark golden brown. Now we're coming out. Woo! That's a mozzarella stick. <laughs> okay, we uh, made two more mozzarella sticks, so now we have four, and now we're gonna move on to onion rings. So this is gonna go into the cornstarch, kinda absorb any excess moisture from the onions. I'm gonna ask for some help. Ryan, can you give me a hand here? This is Ryan, he's on our culinary team, he's amazing, and he is the reason why this video is going to work. If you wanna hold the bowl right next to the oil, this will be a two-man effort. So go in. Ooh. That's kind of cool. Okay. Thanks for holding, Ryan. Mm -hmm. So, let's see if we can get this under here. We gotta drip off any of the excess we got in the back. Here goes nothing, guys. Woo! All right. Well, that's what you can do with the power of teamwork. Thank you, Ryan. This is at around 350 or so, 370-ish, because the onions inside are raw, so we need to cook them through, just like an onion ring. So this is gonna fry, I'm gonna say like 10, 15 minutes until it's golden brown and crispy, and I'm gonna check back on it. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. The color is really nice. I think that looks like an onion ring coming out. 
All right, we got probably two more to go because you can't have a complete set without four rings and four sticks. So I got a lot more batter to go through. See you guys in a bit. We did it. We tried a lot of stuff. We got four onion rings. We got four mozzarella sticks. But I think it's time to really assemble these, just like Captain America says. We got some really cool containers for the onion rings. This guy goes first. All right, hanging out. This guy coming over here. And then we're gonna get my boy onion ring number three. And then final guy. Those are the four uh, onion rings. Let's go plate the mozzarella sticks. All right. That's one. All right, two, three. All right, this one goes in the back. To finish it off, to make it look really delicious, you know, why not? There's some make it rain Parmesan on top. And then, I'm gonna make it rain parsley too. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty awesome, guys. Mozzarella sticks are finished. They are plated. There we have it. We have giant mozzarella sticks, giant onion rings, Regular marinara sauce, just a lot of it. I think Jake's super hungry. Say no more, let's go eat. Hey Jake. What's up dude? Uh, you ready for your food? Yeah man, let's right. see it. All right, close your eyes though. All right. I'm gonna bring them in one by one. Honestly, my mouth is already salivating a bit. Food is in front of you. Okay. Hope you're hungry. I think you might be very happy with the results. So on the count of three, I want you to open your eyes, all right? <laughs> all right. One, two, three. Open your eyes, dude. Holy <laughs> shit. oh my God. That is huge. Yeah, pretty good, right? Is this enough for you to eat on while we play games? I think so. <laughs> I'll crush at least a few of these. Uh, <laughs> I hope so. You oh, seem to be eating a lot, dude. Yes. Yeah, we have some giant mozzarella sticks. Got some giant onion rings, and we oh, have some homemade marinara. Homemade, oh my god, you're you really treating me right, right man. Wow. Yeah. The best part about a mozzarella stick is, you know, when you pull it and you get that great cheese The bowl. cheese pull. If you want one, two, three, give it a nice pull slowly. Oh, whoa. Oh, this is some good mozzarella. This is some, oh my god, it keeps going. <laughs> it keeps going, oh. Oh, 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 oh okay, we're gonna, man. oh my god, yes. This is crazy. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. Well, we gotta dip first. Can yeah. I dip? Yeah, of course you can right. dip. I dip, you dip, we all dip. dip. I don't know right, what that right. song goes, but that's what it is. All right. All right, cheers, dude. Cheers, man. Have a good one. Mmm. Right. Mmm. Wow. How is it? Dude, this is unreal. This tastes so good. It's good, right? This is like a mantra stick sandwich. This is like the yeah. best thing ever. <laughs> this is like an innovative dish. You want to try one of these onion rings too? I'm gonna try onion ring. There you go. Ooh, yeah. Oh, whoa, all oh, right. Yeah, Look there you that. go. Oh, hey, what's up? How's it going? <laughs> How you doing? I'm just gonna do a little dip. Mmm. <laughs> the <So> hot. <laughs> Sorry, we just made it. Good? Yeah, yeah. some good onion in there. How do you feel? You feel good? <laughs> Having mood. All right. Oh my god. Well, I'm happy I could make this for you. I know you guys are, might be playing some games later. You know, if you want to bring this to the guys, it's a oh. lot of food. Oh, hell yeah. Well, I'll help you bring this over, all right? All right, see you, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. Woo! It's been a tough day today. You know, we, uh, we cried a lot. I sweated a lot, but I would say it's pretty successful. Jake was happy. I was very impressed with just how far the mozzarella pull got. I think that was probably one of my favorite giant foods so far. And you know, this is the second to last episode of this season of Making It Big. If you guys want to take a guess at something cool that I have prepared for you guys next week, feel free, leave it in the comments, send me a message. It's gonna be kind of crazy and I think you'll know the person that I'm making it for. But until next time, peace. Make you fancy, Alvin. Oh, no, we're making it big. <laughs> That's the name of the show. <laughs> this is a 100 egg omelet. Uh, I'm dying. It's a damn lot of eggs. It's a lot of time. Shout out to all my hens out there. You're the real ones. All right, stay together, stay together. One, two, three. Open your eyes, Rie. <laughs> Guys, 
I'm Alvin. I love making giant food. And today on Tasty's Making It Big, we're gonna do some crazy stuff. Today, I'll be cooking for my fellow Tasty producer, Rie. You might have seen her on Worth It, on Eating Your Feed, and a lot of other Tasty videos. She's an amazing producer and a wonderful chef. I wanna see if I can make something that's really cool that'll really impress her. So let's go see what she wants to eat today. Hello. Hey, Alvin. How's it going? Good. Did you have any lunch or dinner plans today? I didn't have lunch, I didn't have <laughs> breakfast even, okay. so I'm very hungry. What do you personally enjoy like eating on a day-to-day -day basis? I love Japanese breakfast. Okay. Rice, mm -hmm. miso soup, mm -hmm. and tamagoyaki, mm -hmm. which is Japanese-style omelette. The one where they like cook it in the pan and it rolls up? Exactly. Okay. So, I would be so impressed if you made me omelette. Like a giant omelette? Giant omelette. Oh. <laughs> well, just to be clear though, like American omelets and Japanese omelets are different, right? Like what makes them so unique? So Japanese omelette, it's like you explained, it's like rolled and it's layered. Mm -hmm. American omelette has a lot of fun ingredients mm -hmm. like peppers, caramelized onions, mm -hmm. bacon, and cheese. Are those your, like your favorite ingredients in omelets? Yeah, I love caramelized onion and okay. bacon combination. Doesn't seem like it's going to be very easy. Make you fancy, Alvin. Oh, no, we're making it big. <laughs> That's the name of the show. Oh, I have an idea. Yeah. Not only am I going to make you a giant omelet, what if I make you a 100 egg omelet? 100 egg omelette. 100 egg omelette. It would be so amazing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna get to it. Okay, here we are. As you can see, I have many, many, many eggs. I have never purchased, handled, or seen this many eggs in one place in my entire life. So the first step to making a 100 egg omelette is to crack 100 eggs. So let's get cracking. Hey. Oh, I broke the first one. We are off to a fantastic start. To crack eggs, you wanna take the egg and you wanna crack it on a flat surface, not on the edge of a pan or a bowl because it could really shatter the inside. Knock, knock, who's there? You know, just an egg. Sometimes people ask me, what came first, chicken or the egg? After hours of deliberation, I don't really know. <laughs> Fun fact, <laughs> a hen lays one egg every 26 hours. So that means for one hen to lay 100 eggs, that would, that would be, what's the, oh, damn it, I'm, I'm Asian, I should be knowing this better. Days, 108 days and eight hours for one hen to lay 100 eggs. Also known as a damn long time. <laughs> Shout out to all my hens out there. you the real ones. We're almost there, it's been quite a journey. Number 100. Whew. Okay, we have officially cracked 100 eggs into this bowl. It's a damn lot of eggs. It's a lot of time. Thank you chickens for your hard work. I'll see you in a bit. So these are 100 eggs. We're just gonna whisk them and we're gonna season them later. I'm actually very excited for this. We're gonna go. Woo! <laughs> There's so many eggs, I can't even get them all. I want to make sure this is the smoothest egg mixture anybody's ever seen. So I want to whisk the crap out of these eggs. <laughs> Woo. It's a workout. Right arm's getting real tired about now. <laughs> oh, there was a yolk I missed. There you go, I got you. That's right, you don't escape from me. I eat yolks for breakfast. Actually though, I like this beat. That's the egg beat. All right, I'm done. Arrgh, my arm's dying. I'm so tired. I'm slowing down. It's not a vortex anymore. It's a kiddie pool. I want to say that's pretty much done. You know, we got a nice consistent color. We're all good. We're going to add some salt. I don't know how much salt to put in because it's 100 eggs, so I'm going to kind of eyeball it. I want to say that's enough. I'm going to transfer these and start rolling our omelet. My technique for making this omelet is similar to the Japanese style, which is called a tamagoyaki. I think it's going to be like a rolled omelet. So what I'm gonna do is we have two of these trays lined with silpat to make sure it doesn't stick. I'm actually just gonna brush these with a lot of butter. Butter and eggs, you know, fantastic marriage. Obviously, you know, we could dump 100 eggs, you know, into a pan maybe, but it's kind of boring, you know, it's not what I do. I have no idea if this is going to stay upright, if it's gonna break, but it's all good. 
we're going to basically try to pour some eggs in here. I'm gonna guess like a quart of eggs per container. Mmm, delicious. Oh yes, nothing like pouring liquid eggs. Let's go evenly. Is this enough eggs? I hope it's enough eggs. I think it's enough eggs. Nice, nice, nice. All right, let's go for round two. All right. I'm gonna go and take these to the oven to bake. I want it to set into a nice sheet, but I don't want it to overcook. We're gonna cook at 300 for, I'm gonna say 10 minutes. I'm gonna very carefully take this to the oven. All right, Alvin, don't you mess this up now. Your honor is on the line. I cannot displease Rie. Okay, we have nice uh, big egg sheets here. This was a little lopsided. I think in the oven, it just kind of tips a little bit that way. It's okay. We're gonna put some cheese on it and I washed my hands, so we're all clean. This is gonna go like over here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. The heat from the egg sheets are going to actually help melt the cheese while it's being rolled. We're gonna do some bacon bits on here. I love bacon, really likes bacon. <laughs> I think this is gonna be fun. Well, that's kind of awesome. And we're just gonna kind of go for it and roll it and see if this works. So first you gotta get it to go around though. Keep it all tight. Yeah, there we go. All right, this is sheet number one. We're gonna transfer it over to here. We're gonna do the same thing. Coming out and landing. It's going well so far. No major hiccups. We're gonna keep going. <laughs> okay, and there you have it. <laughs> That's roll number two. <laughs> Edge is looking a little floppy. That's okay. I'm gonna need to reuse these trays though. So we're gonna transfer this onto a board. This is getting heavy already. Whew. To keep this warm, I'm gonna cover it in some foil. And then we're gonna do two more trays. <laughs> hey. Each one of these, I think is around 20 eggs. Hopefully uh, <laughs> I didn't mismeasure. Tray number three, tray number four. 20 eggs a piece, let's put them back in the oven. Fingers crossed I can keep rolling this without it breaking or doing anything because surprisingly, this is going according to plan. <laughs> All right, these look pretty fantastic. Fix the little oven adjustment so a little bit smoother. We got some nice American cheese. Look at this beautiful stack. It's like I got the cheddar, like in the rap music videos. Load this guy up. Actually very fun. <laughs> I'm a happy boy. <laughs> Not too much. Some for me. This is it for this one. That one's gonna get ham. It's like I'm painting, but with food. I think it's time to roll. We're gonna take the one we made before and then somehow get this onto here. Slow. Ooh. All right. <laughs> well, we've landed. Now we're gonna start to roll again. Ooh. Like that. Now it's getting kind of heavy. Tuck it, tuck it, okay. Ooh, smooth. And then one more time. All right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's getting kind of crazy, uh, but you know, we're all good. It's keeping together relatively well. And now we have to get that guy onto here. <laughs> Am I strong enough to do this? Oh, come on. All right. Successful landing. <laughs> this omelet is one big bowl. <laughs> All right, and then one more time. Oh, the tray's tipping. <laughs> okay, so uh, we are currently at 80 eggs. This is getting heavy. <laughs> Woo! The omelet is on the board. Still got a little bit to go. I'm gonna set this aside, and we're gonna go for the last 20 eggs. Oh my God, this is heavy. Oh. Okay, so I think I might have miscalculated how many eggs I need to use per tray. This won't make enough for two trays. This is only gonna be enough for like one and a half, so we're going big. I think let's do 120 eggs. I'm gonna whisk this one more time to make sure we're okay. I don't know if you guys have seen the 100 layer lasagna video. I ended up doing 104 layers on accident. It's kind of in my blood to go a little bit over what I'm used to doing. I'm trying to impress Rie. Hopefully she will be impressed by the fact that I went above and beyond for her. This is 100 eggs. Oh, a yolk fell out. That's okay. We're gonna whisk it back in. <laughs> 120 eggs, the final layer. Might be a little heftier than most because it needs to be the outer layer. I'm gonna take this in to bake. 
And we're gonna hope that we can actually make this work because if it's too big and it breaks, I'm gonna be very sad. Don't fail me now. Oh. <laughs> so this is the fifth sheet, 100 eggs. This is the sixth one, 120. I think they look beautiful. I think they look super smooth. Rie loves caramelized onions, so we have caramelized onions. I also do want to put a little bit more cheese because I think it'll help bind the last layer. I think it's gonna taste pretty darn awesome. There's a lot of flavors going on. You got sweetness, you got creaminess, you got saltiness pretty much. And every single layer, it's been a long journey. I've used probably like five pounds of cheese at this point. I think it's gonna be pretty awesome. So we got a really heavy guy over here. We're gonna start rolling and hopefully now that everything goes according to plan. <laughs> oh. That was really heavy. Oh my God, this guy's getting massive. Oh, this might be tough. This is heavy. I gotta grip it. We're at 100. This little extra leg room is gonna help. We're gonna move it on to 120. It all comes down to this, folks. I don't know if you can tell, this is wobbling. <laughs> I need this guy to last me one more and then we'll be okay. Please, don't fail me now. Come up. Okay, the reason I put this guy in the middle is because I want to fold this over and then just do one last roll and we'll be there. This is the big moment. Last layer. All right, that is on. All right, stay together, stay together, stay together, stay together. Woo! All right, <laughs> we did it. This is a 120 egg omelet. It's very big. It is very heavy. While it's still warm, I do want to serve it, but I also need to decorate it a little bit. So to finish, Rie likes chives and ketchup on her omelet. I'm gonna draw a face and hopefully it looks kind of cool. <laughs> okay, so now we gotta give this guy cheeks. <laughs> this is my uh, attempt at a design, not the next Picasso, but that's okay. I'm gonna finish this with a touch of chives just in the front and in the back. Okay, those are the last of the chives. <laughs> it's been crazy. This is one heavy guy, so we're gonna go get this omelet to Rie. Hey Rie. Yeah. You ready for your omelet? I'm ready. All right, close your eyes please. Okay. I'm very excited to see <laughs> what you think on the count of three. One, two, three. Open your eyes, Rie. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh my God. <laughs> I thought you were gonna make just an American omelet. Uh -huh. This is Japanese one. It's a rolled one. Oh yeah. my god! It's actually not a hundred eggs. Uh huh. It's hundred and twenty. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna go. Back. We could do one more. I love it. Cool. Do you want me to cut it open for you? Yes. Yeah. If you want to give it a name before we cut it in half, you're more than welcome to. Well, let's name this um, after your middle name, which is Carl with K. Why did you have to tell them my middle name? So the this is Carl. The tables have turned. <laughs> Sorry, Carl. Ow. Did you just say ow? <laughs> no, it was Carl. Oh, it Carl said me. ow. Wow. Yeah. Look at the layer. This is what it looks like on the inside. You're touching Carl? How does Carl feel? I don't Carl know. is very bouncy. Did Carl give you permission? <laughs> Here is your omelet. Thank you. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Good? Mm hmm. Woo. Wow, tasty. Oh, colorful too. So it sounds like Carl was a success. Carl was a success. Mm -hmm. You impressed me. <laughs> I'm happy I finally got the chance to cook for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, anytime. <laughs> Please continue to eat. Okay. I think the rest of the world should see this. Okay. <laughs> Well, we did it guys. We impressed Rie. A lot of effort, but I think it definitely was worth it. I think now I have a newfound respect for eggs. And this is it. This is the final episode in this season's Tasty's Making It Big. It's been a blast. Six episodes, six crazy giant dishes for six amazing people. I'm super happy that I got the chance to do this. I'm always gonna be trying to do bigger and better things. So until next time, peace.